All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. Dorky M40, I'm Chad. We're gonna do a quick video on my setup and PIDs on my upgraded Tiny Hawk Freestyle. So this Tiny Hawk Freestyle is coming in at about 62 grams and with two 520 GMB batteries, it's coming in at 87 to 88 grams. So that should give you a good idea on the weight that we are working with. So this has TBS Crossfire, this has the Immortal T antenna on it. As you can see, this has the Runcam Racer Nano 2, uh, TBS Pro 32, and I'm using the stock props. Um, and I think that's uh, pretty much about it. So real nice little package, everything just fits in there really good made sure that I don't have anything going on. There's no compression and everything like that. So the flight controller board is free to move as it can. And then the Pro 32 is VHB'd really good down over top of the gyro with uh, two layers of VHB tape. So that way the gyro is not being influenced by any kind of shaking or vibrations or anything like that at all. One thing that I have done is I have left the dipole on there. I've had really great luck with the TBS dipoles uh, for pretty much since I've been working with micros uh, for the past couple years. So no problem with that. The camera is just hot glued and VHB'd in for now. I might do something with it in the future. I am not 100% sure. So let's take a look at Betaflight here and I'll show you what's going on. And I will play some video here in the background so you can take a look at what exactly I was flying. All right, really important thing that you need to do first before you flash the 4.1 or whatever you are flashing from. If you have not, make sure you go into the CLI and do a dump of everything because you are going to need all of this stuff up here at the beginning which is all of your resource and dma settings and stuff like that because the motors on here are remapped and the flight controller board is rotated at 270 degrees so you're going to need to get all that stuff and you'll have to copy and paste that over into your setup here and make sure you verify how everything is working and your motor directions and all that stuff in Betaflight. So as I said before, make sure that your accelerometer and everything matches there. And once you have pasted all of that, verify that your motors are actually running where they need to be as well. Now I have flashed all of the AESCs with uh, the J-Flight uh, 48 kilohertz uh, software. So that way we can run RPM filters. You can see that I have that set up here on the motors tab. And if we go into the configuration, you can see that we are set to D-Shot 300 and 4K 4K. So that way we can keep CPU processing low. There's 12 poles on these motors. We have bi-directional D-Shot enabled. I am running a motor idle of 3.5, which seems to work out really good so far. And CRSF, 180 degree arming, pretty much about it. Uh, power and battery configuration, I didn't copy over the scaling. I definitely recommend that you do that and check your voltages and stuff just to make sure that you are on point and you're not gonna be killing your batteries. All right, so when we get into the PIDs and the PID tuning, so the first thing we'll take a look at here is the filter sliders. I am running over at 1.2. I probably could increase this a little bit and have less filtering going on, but I think that this is a good happy medium. Uh, Mark Spatz, UAV Tech, has went through a couple videos and I'm applying a lot of his knowledge to this because I don't have black box on this or anything like that. And luckily things just kind of work out sometimes. So I started at one, I've moved them over to 1.2. That's where I'm gonna leave them. Everything is flying good. The other thing you're gonna need to do is to make sure you go down to your gyro RPM filter down here, change your harmonics uh, to three, 
Make sure that that uh, gyro filter there is at 100. And then you're going to want to change the dynamic notch to low, a Q of 250, and a dyna dynamic notch min hertz of 100. So that way the dynamic notch will slim down, work faster, and just work on that motor band area. Here's a quick look at my rates. Nothing special. Please use whatever rates you feel comfortable with. This is just the rates that I fly typically on all of my freestyle quads. They are cranked up a little bit compared to what I'm used to flying, but it seems to be working out great. I have adjusted TPA and the TPA breakpoint here as well, and that will directly affect your PIDs. So start with this, change it if you want to. So here are the PIDs that I am running, 70, 70, 90, 100 on all of the eyes, 90s on my derivatives, 80s on D-mins, and feed forward I have set at 55. Depending upon what kind of stick feel you like, you can play with feed forward. I tend to like it really low. I usually go anywhere between 50 and 75 on, you know, this two and a half to five inch, six inch uh, type of quad. So that's kind of a personal preference thing, even though it will affect your PIDs and how your quad reacts. Uh, definitely go ahead and click on VBAT compensation. Uh, throttle boost at five, no feed forward uh, transition because I just like my sticks being the, st the same from uh, point to point. I turn relax is on, set the gyro, a cutoff of 10. D min is set to 30 with an advance of zero and anti-gravity is set to smooth with a gain of seven. So if you want explanations about all this stuff, definitely check out Mark Spatz UAV Tech's videos on where he goes through and explains kind of how these tiny whoops are working and how they are running with Betaflight. I know a lot of people said that they have problems getting four and 4.1 to work with smaller quads, but it does work great. I had three inch micros working fighting on four and this and my uh, tiny whoop uh tiny hawk s here actually are running uh nearly the same pids and the same rpm filtering and everything like that so the biggest thing difference between that whoop and this of course is that we're running eye gains and stuff like that because i'm not flying this in angle mode the other thing that people are going to worry about is hey why are your d's higher than your p gains that is something that you typically will see in smaller quads just because it's what they need to work. We are running our D-mins at 80, which means that most of the time they are going to be between 80, but they can go as high as 90. And that seems to be a really good sweet spot uh, that Mark has found uh, through lots of black box and stuff. I think with a Mobula 7 or something like that which he did all of his stuff outside and it's pretty much applicable to this. So I just kind of went with it, put in whole numbers because I like whole numbers and everything's fine. As you can see from the video, I've been able to throw this thing into any positions that I've wanted to and it flies just great, really great, really happy. Again, disappointed that I had to spend the extra money to get the freestyle to run and just work from a control and video standpoint that uh, you know that I had to spend that, but now that it is flying the way that it is, I'm very happy with that. We'll see how it compares to the Gep RC Phantom and something that is lower priced overall and pretty much comparable on weight, a little bit more higher powered. We'll see how all that stuff goes. Hopefully this helped you out. You have any questions let me know i'm sure i'm going to be changing this refining this also going to be trying out some dual blade props stuff like that so that's it we'll talk to you guys later